All right, welcome to the tour of the Transformer roll bar. This is a roll bar for the NC chassis Miata that addresses the problem these cars have on the track. Uh, the factory top is a wonderful little thing, but it prevents the top, or prevents the roll bar from being very tall, uh, so it doesn't really give you a whole lot of protection. This is the um, tallest bar you can actually run in a car with a power hard top. The soft top car like this one can run about three inches higher for a street bar, but even then, it's way too short to actually work. So what we've done is we've worked with the guys at Hard Dog and come up with a bar that can be transformed. Uh, when you get to the track, it'll let you uh, run a street bar on the street and a tall track bar on the track. So obviously, we are uh, in street mode right now. Lots of room for the top to work. Everything's handy. In the trunk, we have a permanently mounted bracket. Uh, this is where the rear braces for the bar will go uh, to give us lots and lots of rollover protection. Don't mind the garbage in the trunk. This is a... Uh, a development car. Poor thing's been used badly. Here are the extra pieces. This is the stuff we need to bring with us uh, to the track in order to convert this bar from a street bar to a track bar. They will fit in the trunk if you take out one of the plastic pieces and we'll start from there. Okay, we've just pulled up to the track. Now it's time to do our conversion. We start by pulling the seats forward. You can see there's two bolts here. There's two on each side. Uh, we just have to remove those and then we can take the street hoop out. Okay, sizes are, what's that, a 9 16 These use SAE bolts because honestly they're a lot easier to find in the US, a lot easier to replace if you need to, need to do so. So take out number one. There's the first one. The other three quarter. Nice big burly grade 8 bolts. There we go. the other side. Okay, with the fasteners off the other side, we just have to take off one piece of trim. This has got the same sort of fastener that we have all over the trunk. If you put this bar in, you recognize these. Just pull up the middle and it pops out. That lets us take this off. It just usually pops out. There we go. And put it somewhere safe. I've already taken off the one on the other side, so now it's time to take off the bar itself. For this, we need special tools. This is a soft blow hammer. Uh, it does not have a metal face. It's got a nylon face so it won't mar the bar. To be particularly sure you can use a rag on the end. Now this thing is in here tight. It has to be. It's kind of the whole point. So we'll put the bar around here. Give a couple of good whacks on each side. And the bar will start to pull up. This will actually be easier if we pop the top a little bit. Let the plastic move. So we just keep lifting the bar, trying not to let it wedge in place. It's got to come out fairly straight. If you have a friend, it's a great time to use them. There we go, and we are loose. Now we're just held in place by the plastic, which just pulls apart. And there we go, there's our street bar. Now, as they say, installation is reverse and disassembly. You can see that there's a tower on each side, and the bar itself actually slides into that tower. So, we'll just pop the plastic out of the way. There we go, there's one side. Plastic. There we go, there's the other. And now it just slides into place. And there's our big bar. Now the fasteners go back in. Bolt right in the same hole. It'd be a lot easier with an impact gun. But we're pretending we're at the track, so we'll just use hand tools. do 
haven't tightened that down all the way yet. Leave it a little bit loose in case we have to do some fine tuning on the fit. Uh, when the rear bars go on, they're a tight fit. Our main hoop is in place. It's not bolted down yet. We want a little bit of play in there just in case we need a little help with alignment of the rear braces. So, now we have an always problem with trunk lid. On this car, we've cut the trunk lid. It's got a couple of little hoops in it that allow us to run the bars through the top, or through the, through the trunk lid, um, and you can either use the same trunk lid with or without the bar. Obviously, it's not ideal for a streetcar. Uh, rain is an issue. In that case, another option is to simply undo the four nuts that hold the trunk lid to the hinges, whole thing lifts off, and you're good to go. So at the track, you run without a trunk lid. When you put on the street bar, you just put your uh, stock lid back on again. Okay, so we take this bar. It's got a clevis at each end. Just line it up on here and slide it in place. It might not always go that easily. If you need to give it a few taps with the hammer, that's understandable. This is some pretty heavy-duty stuff. There we go, there's our fasteners. Now we do the other side. Again, slides through the trunk hole, over the clevis on this side, or over the tab on this side. This one's a little crankier. So we'll use our hammer. And there we go. With our trunk lid back in place, our bars in place, we simply tighten everything up. Uh, bolts on here, there, there, and then the four on the bottom. Uh, we can attach our harnesses. This particular bar has harness tabs on it as well, so you can just hook your harnesses in place, put your plastic back on if you want to, and you're done. You're ready to go. Obviously, you won't be using the top during the track day. Make sure that's latched down. And uh, there we go. There's our transformer bar, nice and tall.